Okay, so I had a couple of requests coming in over the years anyway, or explanations being requested in class, and then I've had just had one over email now. Obviously, we've been in some holidays for a week. I've just spent a week reading, so I'm going to try to get my brain in gear for this one, all right? So what happens when a CPU encounters a jump instruction? So um, let's look at the normal kind of like standard FDE cycle, what's taking place. So when, when the, the CPU starts executing instructions, we know that. We're going to copy in uh, the address of the first instruction that we want to execute into the program counter. So the program counter is going to hit zero. All right. Sorry, I um, forgot to finish my diagram. So we've got two buses. Okay, we've got the address bus, right? We've got the data bus over here. Sorry, that it shouldn't be an arrow over here. This is one way. All right. So that zero gets copied down into the MAR. The MAR will then copy that onto the address bus so we can go into the RAM. We fetch that instruction that that's address that goes down the data bus into the MDR, from the MDR it will go into the CIR, all right, it will get split, instruction goes as a control unit, we execute the instruction, okay. Don't forget that as soon as that instruction from here was fetched and came down here and hit the MDR, all right, went down into the MDR, that program counter now says one, because that means that on the next FDE cycle, we're going to fetch the second instruction, it's going to come down in here, as soon as it hits the MDR, that again gets replaced with two. So as the instruction has been executed, we're going down and we're pointing out, sorry, as each instruction is being fetched, okay, the program counter is being point, moved down to point out the next instruction along, okay? So basically what we're saying is we've got fetch, all right, over here. Uh, so contents of the PC copied to the MAR, all right? Um, we've got the binary at that address is fetched okay by the data bus and then finally as soon as that is copied into the MDR and copied to the MDR now down here the program counter is going to go up by one so PC plus one then the instruction is decoded the instruction is executed and then we fetch the next instruction along all right now just remember over here in the decode stage right if the um, number bit basically says that uh, the operand is an address right then we need to fetch that data so what do i mean by that Remember when this assembly language is converted, right, into um, machine code, these uh, logical addresses are going to be converted to these physical addresses. So if we were storing the value A in number 7, when this was converted, that would be turned into a 7. If B was being stored in 8, then that would be turned into a number 8, right? And then again, storing in A, so that would actually be memory location 7, all right? Because we're converting the symbolic address into uh, an actual physical memory address, all right? So if we were going to execute this instruction, load seven, all right, yeah, we would fetch that. We'd look at that opera, the number bit, and we'll say, you know what, we need to fetch what's in memory location number seven. So we need to do a second fetch, and we need to go actually go and get what's stored in this memory location down here into the CPU so we can carry out that instruction, all right? Now, what would happen if we hit a jump instruction? But if you've been learning little man computer, there's a couple of different jump instructions that you would have seen. BRA, branch always, BRZ, branch of zero or positive, and then BRP, branch of zero or positive. All right? So we've got a similar example over here in terms of my program, all right? So I'm going to load A, then I'm going to add B, then I'm going to store in A, then if what I've got in my accumulator is not um, zero or positive, then I'm going to loop back to here, I'm going to branch, okay, to this label over here called STR, which was the start, and I'm going to run that sequence again, and I'm going to keep going until, basically, that value that I had in the accumulator is zero or positive. So I'm assuming I'm starting from some kind of negative number, okay? So what's going to happen during that fetch execute cycle, All right? I know that when I start running my program, I'm going to have zero in the program counter, I fetch that first instruction, all right, it's going to be replaced with one. Then when I fetch the first in that instruction over here, it's going to be replaced with two. Then that's going to repla be replaced with three. And then imagine the value that I have stored in here now is like minus three. That's not zero or positive, so we know we've got a loop again. It tells me I've got to go 
right? Oh, hang on a minute. So when I fetch this instruction three, as soon as that branch instruction was copied down, that value in the program counter was now replaced with four. So the program counter is always going to be pointing to the next instruction along. But I've just determined that what's here in my accumulator is not zero or positive. So that means that actually I need to execute this branch instead of going to instruction four as I would have normally done, I need to go back up to the beginning of my program and run this sequence of instructions again. All right. So what happens over here? That means that when I copy this BR, BRZ STR down, remember these logical addresses or these symbolic addresses were replaced with physical addresses. So STR was replaced with that memory location zero. All right. So we copied that instruction down and it went into the uh, current instruction register. And remember in the current instruction register, it's gonna have, it's gonna be all in binary, but just for our convenience's sake, we're gonna assume it says BRZ zero. Now, ordinarily in the FTE cycle, what happened over here was that program counter went up by one. So it went from pointing to three to four. When that sliced, went into the control unit, control unit looked at the opcode, was like, hey, hang on a minute. I need to go back to instruction zero. So that means that what was in the program counter over here now needs to be replaced with this operand and that operand gets sent back up here into the program counter. So then that can get copied to the memory address register. We can go fetch that address, that instruction at that address and then move what's going on. So instead of going down the program flow like we were supposed to, what we did over here is we jumped like that up to here, okay? So what changed? This was our normal FTE cycle as we were going along, okay? But when we hit our branch instruction, so the program counter went up by one as normal, we decoded the instruction, right? It was a jump instruction, which was BRA, if you've been learning little man computer, as I said, BRZ or BRP, all right? So what happens? First of all, right, that operand gets copied to the program counter. So normally, in a normal FDE cycle, the program counter goes up once. But when we hit a jump instruction, that program counter is gonna get changed twice in the same cycle, all right? So that operand gets copied into the program counter, all right? Um, so that's what happened over here because that's the new address that we need to go to. New address for the next instruction. Because as we saw over here, that program counter was pointing to four and that was the wrong instruction to jump to. Actually what we needed to do was to jump back up to instruction zero. Okay, then in the execute stage, basically what's gonna happen is that, that the program counter value is copied to the MAR and the new instruction, okay, will be fetched. But it's not really happening here though, is it? Yeah, it's gonna happen over there in the execute stage. So I've, I've actually put this in the wrong place. That is gonna happen over there, okay? So basically what's happened, there's two things that have happened over here, okay? So the, the impact of this is number one, right? We know that, right, PC is updated twice in uh, the single cycle because normally it's gonna be updated once in the FDE cycle. Secondly, all right, we would have done, if we were doing a normal instruction like add, we would have fetched it, we would have seen that we had got to add then the execute stage we would have added the instruction and then we would have gone on to the next one. So we would have gone instruction one, instruction two, instruction three, instruction four. In this case, we didn't get a chance to actually execute the instruction, all right? So there's actually been a delay because the instruction that we were gonna fetch isn't the one that we are gonna fetch, all right? So if you, if you get what I'm trying to say, we would have gone straight from loading to adding to storing. But this time, instead of da 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 and actually carrying out instructions that we can execute, the instruction that we're going to do is, is telling us we need to jump to somewhere else to do that other instruction instead. So that means that in essence, for one FDE cycle, we didn't do anything. All right. And that's a, that's a branching, that's a branch delay. All right. That 
so branch delay all right so one cycle is used to basically get okay the new address to jump to so we're trying to figure out basically whether we have to jump or not and then we get the right address that we are going to jump to all right we may not we may not branch okay as you can see like if we were adding up numbers say b had five in it and we had a minus three minus three plus five will give us two on the next one so actually we wouldn't need to loop, we wouldn't branch again we would just continue down okay and we would have gone to we would have gone to instruction four or as 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 per normal but we still would have had one cycle kind of wasted while we were trying to figure out whether we needed to branch or not okay and that's that branch delay where we were trying to figure out whether we can jump or not okay and that's basically what happens when you have a jump instruction